Everyone loves AliExpress, right? They sell all sorts of unnecessary stuff as well as electronics cheaper. You can buy a processor for less money or this RX graphics card which will die after a month of being in use and they also sell SSDs there. With a bunch of pitfalls of course, we already made two videos about this, but they are shipped in a working condition normally and attract customers with their low price. And we all know that when there's a smell of cheap plastic and low prices, that's probably some smart Chinese fella taking advantage of your stinginess and desire to save some money. To be honest, I didn't even hope that our plan would work and I just let go of these $200 that I spent on solid state drives with a total volume of 29 terabytes. We actually ordered products with hundreds of positive reviews and at a great price. But what are these Xiaomi and Samsung drives hiding from us? How to find out the real capacity of a Chinese fake drive and why all these drives eventually got to me for free? This is MK. Today we're talking about the fake Chinese flash for which AliExpress actually gave me a full refund. While preparing for this video, we looked through the entire AliExpress, whose algorithms quickly realized that our tastes were very… singular. And they understood, offering us exactly what we came for. Meet the six magnificent drives. Let's start with this 2TB NVMe SSD Delaye NV1 for just about $30. And yes, some of you may have noticed that it imitates the label of the popular Kingston NV1. I'll tell you in advance, they've actually put some creativity into it. Further, an unnamed SATA SSD with 1TB and it feels like this label here is supposed to say Western Digital Blue. It also costs $30, which is close to what a real Chinese SSD costs per terabyte. Next to it is a particularly cheap option NGFF, a la Samsung 980 EVO for 2TB for just about $45. I think the owners of the original Samsung 980 have recognized this package. Then the imagination and impudence of our Chinese friends went too far. The legendary Samsung 980 Pro at 2TB for $39. The sticker here was actually okay, it's just that I tried to look inside. By the way, the inscription here suggests that specialists from Delay were also involved here. And finally, for those who never sit still. Portable flash drives, or rather, portable SSDs. This shiny portable SSD looks top-notch, I'm telling you, and it's not surprising, it's a Xiaomi, right? It actually looks cool, it even has a USB-C here. And you won't believe it, but it's 16 terabytes for just $25. Okay, here you have to be very far from reality to hope for such a volume to be true. But come on, it looks convincing enough to me. And the last one, which is written all over the package that you should use it as a backup device, and probably they actually meant that you should use a backup device if you're using this as your main drive, comes with micro USB 3.0, which is quite archaic at this point. It is a no-name drive using a case from a Seagate HDD, with as much as 6 terabytes for just $15. It looks battered, and I'll tell you why later. And let's start with the regular SSDs. All four drives report the promised available terabytes in the Windows Explorer. And Crystal Disk Info sees no problems either. Only the condition of the NV1 is like the Schrodinger's cat. Sometimes it is all good and sometimes completely dead. But despite the warning message, we can write on it and then read with no issues whatsoever. So the basic check failed. We need to dig deeper. And there are a couple of methods here. The first one will require disassembling the drive or removing the sticker to see what controller is used. And that's how we found out that these M.2 SSDs are produced by the apparently non-existent Chinese company Delay. At least their website is already dead. On top of that, the two fake Samsung drives use the same demo boards, which by the way the Chinese often sell with an honest real capacity too. We showed that in our previous SSD reviews. The alleged Kingston drive was even funnier. The seller clearly got something mixed up and it came to us with a Samsung label on it. My drive got upgraded while in transit, yay. Now that we know what controllers are used, that is, unless the Chinese scratched the inscriptions off, we can download the script appropriate for your controller from Vadimachkin's website. I will leave the link in the description. Then everything is simple. 
run the script, select the drive and all the information about it will be displayed. The most interesting thing was to check the NV1 which reported bad condition from time to time, which as it turned out uses an inexpensive Realtek RL6577 controller. And the script did its best. The first two memory banks were determined correctly. This is a fairly okay 176 liter TLC memory by Micron, 64 gigabytes each, a total of 128 gigabytes. But the rest of the banks are fake, they are not determined in any way. In other words, they simply do not exist. Therefore, it is not surprising that Crystal Disk Info reports critical condition of the drive. The result is that out of the promised 2 terabytes, there are actually only 128 gigabytes. That for $30, I can use this money to buy 3 SSDs of such capacity at a local store and with a warranty. But with the rest of the SSDs, there are no surprises. They use simple real tech controllers, no fake memory banks detected. But the real ones are all 64 gigabytes, two pieces per drive, that is they are all 128 gigabytes and are not really trying to hide it. At the same time, the memory chips are random. It may be a relatively fast 176 layer micron or a 64 layer one that is a contemporary of MLC drives from the beginning of time. The fake Kingston NV1 stood out most likely because it is supposedly an NVMe drive, judging by its key. This standard is more advanced than SATA and at least formally requires matching the number of banks to the volume programmed into the controller, which is why the Chinese engineers had to add virtual memory chips. Thus, all these quote-unquote engineers do is take generic cheap 128GB SSDs, reprogram the controllers for any desired capacity and sell them at a margin of 3 to 4 times with any labels you want. Kingston, Western Digital or even Samsung if you so wish. It is not difficult to check that the real capacity is actually about 100 gigabytes. For this you will need ADA64, which has a test of fill-in SSD with large data chunks. Our viewers already heard about it. This is a straightforward and rather time-consuming method and here absolutely all fake drives behave the way a fake drive would. They record their first 30 or 40 gigabytes at a speed of about 400 megabytes per second and then they drop all together to the level of regular flash USB sticks at tens of megabytes per second. Then, after recording about 110 gigabytes, the test as expected stops. After all, there is nowhere to write anymore. That is their actual limit. But with conventional SSDs, everything is obvious. All thanks to the advanced SATA and NVMe interfaces which easily bring the lies of our Chinese friends to the surface. But what to do with portable SSDs that connect via USB? I hope everyone understands that you can't possibly buy a dozen of terabytes for just $25. But how do you check that? Windows Explorer obviously doesn't see any problems and such drives are not displayed in Crystal Disk Info or ADA64 at all. As a couple of days of testing have shown, a dozen different utilities are not of any help here. They all report that the drives have terabytes of volume, which is of course not true. What makes it worse is that due to the low write speed, which is about 10 to 15 megabytes per second, the tests take too much time. These programs are aimed at finding errors and they in fact just write small files and immediately read them. And when the real disk space runs out, the tricky controllers just rewrite the files on top of the existing ones in circle. Just like I would record a cartoon broadcast on TV to a cassette with Terminator 2 on it when I was a child. We were advised to use Axel Flash Test. It supposedly can return the real volume. And then 15 available terabytes turned into 2. Which is something. But still, for $25 it's too unrealistic either. So now there's only one way to go. Crack this thing open. And it's not so easy to do. They predicted that you would be curious about the insides of this drive so they put a spell on it prevented you from opening it. The Rune of Hot Adhesive I had to apply the skills of a military engineer and use brute force to dispel the charms of these resourceful agents. I'm actually surprised that they returned me the money after that, for the seller insisted that it was prohibited by the laws of the party. But if he's so smart, he could have at least put a nut into it for a more realistic weight. Xiaomi is a reputable brand, so there wasn't much resistance in the dispute so after I got my refund, I used special equipment to prove my theory of the magical Chinese microSD. Inside both portable SSDs were ordinary adapters for connecting microSD cards via USB, into which inserted were these memory cards. I think you might have seen something like that on the internet before. As for me, I've encountered it for the first time. 
the cost of such flash drives on AliExpress is about $4 to $5. That is, the Chinese raise 500% margin on each fake SSD they sell you. Now that we know how it works, the most important question remains. How to identify a fake drive on AliExpress before actually purchasing it? After all, there are dozens of various drives with weird Chinese names on AliExpress, and among such drives, the fake ones don't really look too bad. Of course, you need to have at least some level of understanding of prices for such products. Genuine drives, even if they are made of the cheapest controllers possible and discarded memory chips, are still more expensive. For a genuine 120 GB SSD, you will have to pay at least $7. For 1TB, about $40. The real cost of even the lowest budget 2TB SSD is at least $90. And solutions with 4TB are as rare as unicorns and could easily be priced at $250 or even $300. Not to mention 30TB drives. There exist such drives by Intel, these are server solutions and they are sold at the price of a couple of RTX 4090s. Of course, there may be price deviations and such, but when a seller offers you to buy 16 terabytes for $25, you should see immediately that this deal is too good to be true. However, it is not always possible to determine a fake drive by its price tag alone. In my case, the alleged 1 terabyte Western Digital Blue cost $30, which is close to a genuine SSD with such volume. Therefore, we always pay attention to the looks of the product and the model. As I said, there are plenty of small SSD sellers on AliExpress but they all share a common thing, a printer that allows them to stick their own labels on generic OEM drives. Therefore, if you see a Xiaomi or Samsung drive, look it up on the web and see if such a drive really exists, and if it does, what it looks like. For example, there is no such thing as Samsung 980 EVO. There is either a regular 980 or 980 Pro in this series. The 980 Pro that we received significantly differs in appearance from the genuine one, even if you look at the photo in the product description. Compare it with the original OEM drive, which I, by the way, also bought on AliExpress for about $170. I think the difference here is quite noticeable, even for those who don't understand a thing about it. Here the controller is bigger and it has a cooling cover, and there is a DRAM cache chip. The fake one looks quite cheap compared to it. Xiaomi offers only one portable SSD with USB-C, and it looks absolutely not like the one we got. Although I should say this one looks quite good too. Similarly, don't even consider drives that do not have a brand at all, and only have common words like SSD, SATA, drive, disk, and so on. And another life hack to identify fake drives, use Google Image Search. Since the Chinese are trying to imitate brand labels, you can easily find the original source and understand that Delay NV1 is an imitation of Kingston. By the way, this SSD has mysteriously disappeared from the shelves but a new store has appeared, Weili D, which sells a very similar thing, also imitating Kingston drives. One thing you should not pay attention to is customers' reviews. Unfortunately, most users would check their drives by simply connecting it to their PC and seeing that it works. And as we have already found out, Windows Explorer will show the data the seller promised. Therefore, such drives quickly gain 5-star reviews in which buyers happily tell you about how much money they saved buying trash and how grateful they are that they were not deceived, or so they think. Of course, you can find honest reviews from people who check their SSDs writing a large amount of data on it too, but they are usually few, so the overall rating of such drives easily goes above 4 stars with hundreds of purchases. But what to do if such an SSD is already on your hands, and I don't even want to know how it happened. Maybe you also decided to get them for free like I did. Of course you need to open a dispute and it is advisable not to delay. There are only 14 days from the moment you show the barcode to a nice lady at the post office. In my case, with all four ordinary SSDs, screenshots from Vadimachkin's scripts and a test in ADA64, which shows a real volume of only 128GB, were sufficient enough evidence. With portable SSDs, you will have to enclose the results from fake flash test and H2 test, which kinda determines fake drives, as well as a teardown photo, which clearly indicates that there is a microSD card inside. According to the rules of the website, before the administration kicks in, it is possible to settle the dispute directly with the seller, but it's not worth doing it. These guys know perfectly well that they're selling counterfeited products and they will play innocent to the very last moment. They will tell you that there was an error in the warehouse, suggest you to close the dispute with some partial compensation, and offer to send you the quote-unquote correct drive for free. In fact, all they're trying to do is close the dispute, and at best, they will send you another fake drive of the same kind. 
it will not be possible to open dispute again and you will have two fake 128GB SSDs on your hands at the price of one genuine 1TB SSD. Also, they will suggest that you send the SSD back, promising to cover for the delivery cost. In my case, such a shipment would cost $25, which is basically the price of the drive itself. And they are of course lying. AliExpress cannot refund the amount greater than you paid for the product, that is, sending it back to China, in fact, will be at your expense. As a result, you will lose your solid-state drive and you will also end up paying extra for it. And of course, some of them will tell you that you are cheating and that their drives are fully working. They would show you videos on which they write a dozen gigabytes on such and sometimes other drives. Of course, as we have already found out, such amounts of data can be written onto these drives with no issues. They will tell you that you are trying to prostitute their goods for free and that you are a fraudster. Some of the most impudent ones would say that the teardown of the solid-state drive can damage it. Like that's the reason why the promised terabytes disappeared. In all cases, we need to act the same way. We refuse the seller's decision, write that we want to return the money, and wait for AliExpress to handle it. There is no need to try to prove anything to these sellers as well as insult them. I only once wrote to a particularly arrogant one who bombed my chat that he no good Chinese and no ball of rice for him today. The platform is actually against fake products, so the AliExpress representatives usually offer a refund without any problems. Although they may ask for additional confirmation, just record everything on video. 2 terabyte is bad. But if there is a way to get a refund and not return this trash, how do these sellers even profit from this? AliExpress bans such stores. In my case, out of the 6 SSDs purchased, 2 have become unavailable for purchase, and maybe even more. I am glad that I have contributed to clear in the platform of bad products, but who am I kidding? New ones will appear tomorrow. After all, it's a matter of the number of sales. For these sellers, the simplest 128GB SSDs or 46GB microSD cards cost almost nothing. And after some tinkering, they resell them with a huge margin. The two weeks period is not always enough for the buyers to realize that they got ripped off and only a few will open dispute. And even taking into account the refunds that they are forced to make, such a business is clearly profitable for especially hard-working Chinese fake product dealers. Why else would there be so many of these stores? This was MK. My name is Mikhail Krashen. I'll see you again.